Welcome to TSAT. Today we are going to discuss a topic in science and technology regarding biofertilizers and biopesticides. <clears throat> so, uh, before discussing this, we need to know what uh, biofertilizers and biopesticides are, and we need to know the significance of these biofertilizers and biopesticides. So, in the case of biofertilizers and biopesticides, these are derived from the living organisms. These living organisms can be microorganisms or macroorganisms, means can be derived from the larger organisms, might be from plant or might be from animals. So, a fertilizer which is being derived from a living being, bio means life, is known as a, a bio fertilizer. In this case, uh, uh, why this has got uh, such a kind of significance in this era? As part of sustainable development, biofertilizers and biopesticides play a very major role. The reason behind it is these biofertilizers and biopesticides helps in maintaining the quality of the soil, helps in maintaining the soil organisms which are essential. So, when we are dependent upon chemical artificial fertilizers which are being synthesized in the factories uh, artificially, whether bio pesticides or bio fertilizers are considered. The disadvantages with uh, bio fertilizer uh, with uh, uh, chemical fertilizers and uh, chemical pesticides is the synthesized artificially prepared bio uh, fertilizers, the fiber content in the the fiber content in the organic composition or the fiber content in the fertilizers will be less. So, the water retaining capability and the organic composition supply capability of these uh, synthesized uh, fertilizers will not be sufficient enough to maintain the water level. Apart from this, they will not be able to provide a kind of conditions, re conditions required for the development of soil organisms. Soil organisms are uh, microscopic and macroscopic. Microscopic soil organisms like bacteria and fungi which are essential to degrade the dead plants and animals to enrich the soil, to mineralize the soil. So, the macroorganisms, soil macroorganisms like the earthworms, uh, termites, ants, rodents are essential because they continuously, for example, the earthworm feeds on the soil. In this process, uh, it further breaks the larger uh, uh, organic composition in the form of humus into uh, mineralize breakdown into smaller components of this organic matter which is being made available for the plants to assimilate. So, in this process when the pesticides which are chemicals are being spread uh, over the crops percolate into the soil kills all these organisms. Each and every organism in the soil has got a specific function. For example, bacteria has got the function to degrade, decompose the dead plants and animals and mix the essential uh, nutrition to the soil. So, in the absence of this bacteria, the addition of nutrition in the process of decomposition of uh, dead plants and animals does not uh, happen. Apart from this, another example is for example, we have got rhizobium or azotobacter soil which is living in the soil, azotobacter bacteria which is living in the soil. When they are being killed by these pesticides, the natural way of fixing atmospheric nitrogen to the soil does not happen. So, you need to compulsory depend upon uh, chemical fertilizers bought from the factory. So, the disadvantage as I have told you regarding this and you need to incur more finance as, as part of input, but when bio fertilizers which are, which are synthesized by the farmer himself in the farmland reduces the amount of investment in terms of fertilizers. Apart from that, uh, he is going to maintain the essential condition required for the soil in terms of maintaining the, maintaining the essential soil organisms required for maintaining the soil life. So, this is the significance of uh, bio fertilizers and bio pesticides. So, in this, con in this context, uh, as you know, uh, the macronutrition to the plant, the, uh, the fertilizers which are essential, the majorly are known as macronutrition to the plant as you know, they are being described as NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are the major essential uh, uh, macronutrition to the plant and uh, the rest of the 
micronutrients like zinc, uh, aluminum, uh, zinc, X, iron, etc., which are required uh, to the plants for the development or micronutrients uh, required for the growth of the plant. How these macronutrition, nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, how they are being supplied naturally with biofertilizers, let us uh, discuss. So, in this case, the, uh, the major uh, biofertilizers are, for example, the nitrogenous biofertilizers which are being supplied from the decaying organic matter derived from plants and animals both. So, these major fertilizers are being classified into nitrogen and phosphorus biofertilizers. So, there must be a balanced supply of these uh, fertilizers to the plants. So, phosphorus is also an important factor of uh, plant growth because phosphorus which is essential as a biofertilizer, uh, unlike nitrogen biofertilizers, phosphorus biofertilizers can be used for almost all type of crops and soil. It is a basic essential uh, fertilizer required for the plant or any living being because it is one of the basic essential element to form DNA. So, without phosphorus, there is no possibility of formation of a cell. So, that is the reason why uh, phosphorus is one of the major essential component for manufacturing the cell structure of a, a living being. Apart from this, nitrogen plays a very major role in terms of uh, protein formation because apart from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, the fundamental element to make protein uh, in plant and animal body is nitrogen. So, this nitrogen is not uh, directly, uh, cannot be assimilated directly by the plants. They need to be converted, uh, the atmospheric nitrogen need to be converted into nitrites, then only they can be used by the plants. So, this process of fixation of nitrogen is being done by microorganisms like azola or azotobacter or uh, rhizobium. These are certain uh, uh, microorganisms living in the soil helps in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen, making them available to the plants in the form of nitrates, so that uh, proteins can be synthesized by the plants. That is the major significance of uh, microorganisms in the soil, which can be used as a biofertilizer development. For example, uh, mycorrhizal fu fungi preferentially withdraws minerals from organic matter for the pla plant, whereas cyanobacteria are characterized by the uh, by the property of uh, nitrogen fixation. Azospirellum is a nitrogen fixing bacteria that live around the roots of uh, higher plants, but do not uh, develop an intimate relationship with the plant. So, what these are certain microorganisms which helps in fixing the atmospheric uh, nitrogen. So, these some of them live in uh, symbiotic association with the plant roots, some live free in the soil fixing the atmospheric nitrogen, making the nitrogen available to the plants. So, they are free living soil bacteria that perform nitrogen fixation. They are saprophyte, sap, saprotrophic uh, and uh, anaerobic such as clostridium, azotobacter. These are some of the examples of uh, bacteria which helps in fixing the atmospheric uh, nitrogen. Among all the types of biofertilizers, rhizobium and azospirellum are the most widely used uh, uh, biofertilizers. So, these are known as uh, rhizophores. So, uh, these are uh, microorganisms living in the soil, makes some organic matter and inorganic matter disintegrate and make, uh, make the fertilizers or minerals available in elemental form where the plants can assimilate. These are being done by these microorganisms living in the soil, helps in the plant growth and development. Phosphorus is one of the essential nutrient for plant growth and development. Phosphate solubilizing microorganisms hydrolyze insoluble phosphorus compounds to the soluble form of a uptake by plants. Many fungi and bacteria are used for the purpose such as Penicillium, Aspergillus, Bacillus, Pseudomonas. These are some of the examples which are used for the 
availability of uh, phosphorus to the plant. So, in this context, uh, you need to mention uh, the microorganisms which are responsible for fixing nitrogenous fertilizers and the microorganisms which are responsible for fixing phosphorus fertilizers. You must be able to clear cutly differentiate uh, the microorganisms which are fixing uh, uh, nitrogenous and phosphorus fertilizers as I have specified to you being displayed. Rhizobium, Azola and Azotobacter and the blue green algae are some of the microorganisms which fix the atmospheric nitrogen. Rhizobium are soil bacteria that can fix nitrogen found in the air inside the roots. Rhizobia can, in, rhizobia can invade extended cells of the cortex and then differentiate into nitrogen fixing bacterioid. So, some these are microorganisms which are living in symbiotic association with the plants. They live in the roots of the plants and make the nitrogen available to the plants. So, these are the root nodules which are providing symbiotic association to the microorganisms like rhizobium fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. So, these are microorganisms in the soil fixing a atmospheric uh, nitrogen to the plants. So, in the case of azospirillum, in the case of azospirillum, the microorganisms fix the atmospheric nitrogen and makes it available to the plant in a symbiotic uh, manner. So, for example, rhizobium is uh, in a symbiotic association with the plant, but in the case of azospirillum is in association is not in a symbiotic association, it is in the soil without a symbiotic association to the plant and fixing the atmospheric nitrogen directly to the soil. So, th this is an example of a symbiotic, uh, uh, a symbiotic presence in the soil, this is azospirillum. Family rhizobium and the plant host with this with this carbon is supplied to differentiate bacterial cells termed bacterioids in the form of a dicarboxylic acid. So, these plants are supplying to this bacteria the essential food in the form of carbon dicarboxylic acid. In return, they supply the essential nitrogen to the plants through the atmospheric fixation. Azola is a type of uh, microorganism that mineralizes the soil nitrogen rapidly and it is made available to the crop in a very short period. So, what is happening here mineralization means you have got minerals in compounds. So, sometimes the plants will not be able to observe the complex larger molecule which is in compound. A compound is being formed by a combination of many number of elements together form a compound. So, when these microorganisms dissociate the bonds and mineralize into individual elements, then the plant will be able to observe as a nutrition more efficiently. So, in this way bacteria and microorganisms play a very major role to make the essential uh, to make the essential micro and macronutrients available in the soil by mineralizing means breaking the larger compounds into smaller elements where the plants can assimilate. Nitrogen released from azola is also but study. So, what is happening here is in the artificial fertilizers, in the case of urea for example, a nitrogen fertilizers, there is sudden rapid pumping up of uh, nitrogen to the plants. In this process, the plants all of a sudden grow without strength and they fall because of small, uh, because of a breeze or uh, wind. But when the fertilizers are being supplied with bio fertilizers, the essential nitrogen and phosphorus or potassium is not being supplied all of a sudden. There is a gradual natural mechanism of supply so that the rate of growth of plant will be uh, coherent with the strength of the plant where they can withstand uh, uh, the gale or the wind uh, possible. Nitrogen releases from azola is slow but steady without leaching losses. So, leaching when the weathering and erosion and the leaching dissolving rate is more, what happens is there will be they will be easily be dissolved and drained away before the plants observe. So, when there is slow dissolving nature, the plants will have sufficient amount of time to observe over a long duration of period rather than a short duration of period. 
it serves as a protein rich feed to fish and poultry so what is happening is this azula when it is been cultivated in a kind of uh, algae which can be used as a feed in uh, poultry and uh, fish the azotobacter has the ability to improve the seed germination and plant growth of specific plants see this here in this case uh, the azotobacter is a bacteria which is being used for a different purpose uh, here this is being used for an effective seed germination for example uh, when the farmers buy the seeds from the shops what happens is the percentage of seeds which can germinate uh, might be very less but when the seeds are been treated with azula and they are been sowed the percentage of seeds which germinate to grow into crops uh, are more uh, a different application apart from fertilizers in the case of azula these microorganisms can also benefit crops by nitrogen fixation so there is a double edged advantage here one it is enhancing the rate of germination second it is fixing the atmospheric nitrogen these are the uh, two advantages we have got the release of growth and by the promoting substances so what is happening here is they are also releasing certain growth factors they have evolved a number of uh, metabolic mechanisms to allow it to fix nitrogen enzyme enzyme nitrogenase so the enzyme nitrogenase is responsible for this so they are also helpful for the growth factor of the plants so azola with an algae been cultivated which can be used as a fertilizer fodder to certain cattle and even fish so in this algae the bacteria is cultivated in a farm for this double for these different applications finally the blue green algae known as bga can contains tiny gas vacuoles in their cells which regulate them to float on the water surface or sink to the bottom in response to changing of light and uh, nutrient availability they can form a symbiotic relationship with azola and fix the atmospheric nitrogen the bga is associated with the, the azola so the blue green algae is in association with azola for fixing the atmospheric nitrogen another variant anabina converts converts inert atmospheric nitrogen into a usable form such as nitrate or ammonia see this so these are the list of different kinds of microorganisms which are living in the soil so these are very much important because they are uh, naturally fixing the essential uh, fertilizers to the plants but the problem with the modern intensive agriculture is because of high intense usage of uh, pesticides these microorganisms are being killed and the soil is losing its uh, vitality and losing the soil microorganisms which are essential for the health of the soil uh, for the good production of the crops anabina coexists with uh, a fern called azola just now which you have uh, observed uh, an algae floating on the water is an uh, azola is known as azola is a fern uh, algae which supplies nitrogen to the plants the endophyte so an endophyte is an endosymbiont often a bacterium or a fungus that lives within a plant for at at least part of its life cycle without causing apparent diseases a bacterium resides within the tissue of a plant for at least a part of its life without causing a apparent disease so this is what is known as endophyte which fix the atmospheric nitrogen so this is known as endophyte endo means inside so it lives in the roots of the plants bio pesticide pesticides are also known as biological pesticides or natural pest control agents that are obtained from natural substances they come from minerals plants and bacteria using bio pesticides has advantages over using uh, conventional pesticides because bio pesticides are less toxic to the environment and natural life so as i have discussed initially the advantage of bio fertilizers and pesticides these are less toxic to the environment microbial pesticides may contain specific type of microorganisms such as fungus 
bacteria and even protozoa. So, you are using certain natural substances as pesticides. So, you must be able to differentiate what is a fertilizer and what is a pesticide. A fertilizer is a nutrition to the plant. A pesticide is one a chemical which kills the pest which causing which are causing harm to the plants like insects uh, which are causing problem to the crops are known as pesticides. They may contain specific type of microorganisms such as fungus, bacteria and even protozoans are used as pesticides uh, to the plant killing certain uh, killing certain insects which are infecting the crops and each can each type can be used to utilize a, or utilize or target a specific type of pesticides. In the end, the result of the result that shows up can be significantly noticed. For example, some type of fungi can kill certain type of unwanted weeds, while various types of bacteria can kill different types of insect larvae like flies, moths and mosquitoes. So, for different types of bio pesticides are used against different types of pests. The classic example of a bio pesticide is a Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. So, as you know the classic example here in the case of Bt cotton, in the case of Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, the gene responsible for this bacteria is causing a disease to a bollworm. So, this Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria has got a gene which can cause the disease to bollworm. Bollworm is a pest to cotton plant. So, with genetic engineering and recombinant DNA technology, the gene in Bacillus thuringiensis which is causing disease to bollworm is with the help of biotechnology, with the transgenic technology, the gene is being incorporated into the Bt cotton plant. So, when the bollworm larva eats the cotton plant fruit or the tender leaves, automatically because the gene containing diseases in the leaves of the Bt cotton plant, which is obtained from a bacteria causing disease to bollworm, the bollworm is been killed. These biopesticides, the advantage with biopesticides are they are pest specific. Pest specific means they kill only the pest causing harm to the crop. Whereas, in the case of chemical pesticides synthesized in the factories, what happens is they are not pest specific. When you spray pesticides, it not only, it not only kills the pests like mosquitoes, etc., causing harm to the plant, they also kill spiders, which does not cause harm to the plant or they also kill the earthworms and, uh, and microorganisms living in the soil when they are being percolated into the soil. So, that is the disadvantage with chemical pesticides, but uh, the advantage with bio fertilizers, bio pesticides are they are pest specific means they only kill certain organisms which are acting as pests to the plants. The different strains of this bacteria produce different, uh, different mix of uh, proteins and kill specific insect larvae. That is the main advantage with Bacillus thuringiensis. So, these are the different species here. Be, uh, Bacillus uh, populi, Bacillus uh, lentimorbus. These are some species of uh, uh, Bacillus uh, microorganisms which can be used as a pesticide against a certain uh, pests. These type of uh, uh, Bt so, control moth larvae on plants and the strains are made sp uh, specifically for a larvae of mosquitoes and flies. So, there are certain bacteria which are been genetically modified strains which can infect larvae of mosquitoes and flies which cause harm to the plant. The Bt produces a protein which binds to the larvae gut, uh, gut receptors and cause it, causes it to starve. So, what happens is these bacteria infect this larva and, and what happens is the larva will not be able to feed and finally die. Uh, this is a different uh, way of uh, application of uh, bio pesticides. Each bio pesticide consists of a repellent that can drive the insect away from the plant. 
natural insect repellent so what happens is uh, there are certain pheromones etc been released by the insects when they are being used uh, what happens is you can repel the pests uh, which are attacking the crops or certain female pheromones which are being collected can be used as a traps of these pesticides insects and avoid infection to the crops reduces their food in, uh, intake until they die for starvation in female insects or pests the ovipositor is a specialized organ that deposits eggs so ovipositor is a kind of uh, organ in the reproductive system reproductive system in the insect which is responsible for laying eggs so with this kind of uh, infections by caused by the bio pesticides uh, will not allow, allow the insects to lay eggs some plants contain oviposition deterrent pheromone so they release certain chemicals uh, they don't allow the insect to lay eggs which prevents the insects from laying eggs of the plant so that the the insects or the pests will not reproduce and proliferate causing harm to the plants so advantage of bio fertilizer so what are the advantage of bio fertilizers the advantage of bio fertilizers is it can reduce the amount of input in terms of fertilizers can be reduced about 20 to 30% of the input of chemical fertilizers can be reduced all of a sudden oh throughout the country we may not be able to shift to bio fertilizers but to an extent when we are supplying what happens is it will be a kind of sustainable development and the consumption of chemical fertilizers and pesticides to an extent can be reduced that is one of the main advantages there is a certain disadvantages where where they may not be able to control all the pests that is one of the main uh, disadvantage with uh, bio fertilizers and the production of the crop uh, to an extent will be reduced uh, when relatively compared with uh, artificial chemical fertilizers and pesticides but uh, these are sustainable the supply of the plants with 25% of nitrogen and phosphorus by replacing the chemical fertilizers which can deter which can deteriorate the environment and also cause harmful impact on the living being so what is happening here is with this the harmful pesticides uh, can be reduced or the utilization of chemical fertilizers can be reduced by shifting to bio fertilizers to an extent of 25% so the input cost is being reduced so these bio fertilizers and pesticides are helpful especially in drought management uh, and soil borne diseases and also prevents from damaging the natural soil so that the soil organisms essential are been preserved to maintain the soil quality since bio fertilizers have excellent buffering capabilities and they can contain organic matter they can balance the ph in the soil and reduce the acidity so buffer capacity means in the context of soil in terms of maintaining the essential ph level they can Uh, all of a sudden the ph of the soil cannot be changed they will be maintaining the essential ph required for the soil uh, for the plant growth and apart from this the water holding capability when you are using bio fertilizers and bio pesticides will be more and the irrigation essential can be reduced they help in better aeration so aeration here means the availability of air in the soil the spaces between the soil particles uh, is been filled with air which is essential for the root growth to supply oxygen so these bio fertilizers and what happens is because of the fiber content organic matter present in the fertilizers make soil uh, pores available supplying essential oxygen to the plant root growth effectively so these are the main advantages of uh, bio fertilizers and that is the reason why this is considered as a sustainable source for the crop cultivation so friends in the next episode we shall discuss another topic in science and technology thank you